Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here again, another daily fix. So, I have just been watching a long, long, long Lewis Rossman stream, and I think it's actually still going right now. I've walked away from it, where he's trying to reball a uh, USB chip off, well, 1706 or 1708 or something, I can't remember, the 820-00290 or something like that. Anyway, so um, it's looking like a major drama because Paul S isn't there to help. So I'm going to have a shot and just see how problematic it is and maybe see if I'm just talking out of my butt as to whether the dry paste and slow cook method is going to work here or not. So all right, let's get to it. So we've got one of the chips here, pretty damn sure it's one of these. Now I don't have a stencil for this either, so I'm going to be in the same boat. I figured it's about time I learned how to do one of these because I've got a few in my queue and I don't know if they are going to be faulty, but like I said, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to have the practice. Now I'm running at 460 and 110 here. straight 9mm nozzle. Okay, looks like we definitely have got the same chip, so that's good. Now the fun can begin. I wonder if I'll finish this before Lewis does his. I'm going to see if I can hot air wick this after I put some leaded solder over it. Squeeze. I've got a new tube of flux here, so it's a little harder to squeeze out. I'm just dropping down to uh, for what are we at? 420 and 60 here. Since we're just dealing with the chip itself and not actually trying to. Oh, whoops, I gotta solder it first. Uh, looks like the brain fade has happened. Alright, now we get back to the hot air. Clean that up a bit, because we don't want a dirty chip when we put our balls down. I do not know how good or bad this chip is. As it is coming from a donor board, so it could be completely trash for all I know. Alright, it looks a little, a little less than ideal, but it might be okay. Uh, now we've got to find a stencil of it. So I've got these piece of junk ones from certain places. That pitch lines up but it's not broad enough. God damn. That's annoying. Huh, how's that? That's a perfect fit. You're an iPhone 5S power logic module stencil, so that is a perfect fit. Now for the purpose of this experimentation I am going to use genuinely wet wet paste. But that's because this is what the professionals use. Except mine's got big chunks in it because of, well, because I'm not very professional and I leave the lid off my paste and it gets all janky. Now, one big reason I don't like wet paste is that it wicks underneath the stencil itself when the stencil isn't perfectly flat, like right now. Because I'm pushing down on it, it uh, causes a arching. All right. Let's see how we go with that. We will need to wipe this off. That probably is okay. Alright. Let's see if I can let go of this without... Okay, that seems good. Again, we're going to go come in at 420 and 60 on the 9mm and we are going to take it very slow. Now I can already see one in the middle there is going to be a little bit lacking, but I think it'll be okay, because there's no pad there anyway. Okay, so we're just going to pretty much take a minute or so, at least, before we get this to re-ball, uh, turn into balls. So, 420 and 60, real slow. 
the principle here is that we want the flux to get out of there before the pads, uh, before the balls start to flow. By the way, this is the first time ever using one of these black stencils. It's, they're sort of cute for the fact that they show up the pads quite clearly when you're trying to align, but other than that, I'm not sure there's a lot of gain on this. Oh shit, that's just way too quick. No, that went way too quick. Alright, well, that's flashed over. I'm not sure all those pads actually combine properly. I'm Alright, well that was a first time dud. Like I said, that was with purely wet paste, which is not my preferred way. And that in particular just it went from not... There was no transition in that one, other than instant. Dry paste this time. This may be a little crumblier than even I expect, but we'll see how we go. Still a bit too much flux in there, but at least I can scratch this one over and try and eliminate any excess. Alright, seems good. Alright, let's try our long hot air again. Remember this is no tweezers involved. just gets a little long and boring but it's better than doing it six times or seven If you keep the heat even around it, it will stop your stencil from buckling because it overall is heating up the same rather than having a point heat. You remember these chips sit in an oven for about 3-4 minutes. I mean they're not at the maximum temperature that whole time, the maximum temperature is only done for about 20-30 seconds. But the rest of the time is all about the heat profiling up, you know, getting it warmed up, and then bringing it down. We're going to be getting close now. Here we go, we're starting. And once they're all turned into balls, you can actually then jump in. Yeah, I think we're good. Just a little worried about this one up the top left. Just seems a bit dirty. <sighs> and half the trick is waiting for them to... Okay, it looks like they're flashing back over. It goes hard. Yep. I 
Well, these stencils... If you wonder why we put the flux back on there, it's not because we actually want to truly reflow the balls again, but it's just that the flux acts as a bit of a um, lubricant gets between the stencil and the chip you could probably just throw it in there we go you could easily just throw it into the ultrasonic too if you got the time that should actually come off there we go and that's looking pretty damn good you give that another hit with the reflow get all the balls to recombine better put some a little bit more flux on there You can see there's a lot of that gray, um, gray matter that's between the balls. Okay, that's just tiny dregs of solder paste and we need to have that come and get uh, merged together. You could scrub it off now at this point, but you may find it's just easier to give it a reflow. And it will all just magically merge together. Ah, didn't do it that time, but close enough. Well, there we have it. Took me two attempts, but we have a successful reballing of this USB controller chip. And the main difference there was simply dry paste. Yeah, the stencil probably helped a little bit, but that's... It's not a 3D stencil or anything, it's just a standard square hole stencil. Uh, the key here really was the dry paste and the very long uh, reflow process. So there you have it. Uh, definitely it's a case of turning the fan off before you start talking. It's definitely a case of the dry paste makes things so much easier. It gives you a much bigger margin of error range that you can work within. You don't have to worry about the paste weeping underneath the stencil and creating those bridges that uh, cause the balls to pull together when you reflow them. So definitely dry paste. Try to get a square hole stencil. I will admit these, although they are a bit fiddly, these uh, black ones for the this is for the iPhone I keep forgetting this is for the iPhone 5s get one of these stencils I would say if you're going to do this on a regular basis cut out that portion there when you're cutting it out be careful with how you do it if you using scissors or nips and if you let it go to the final nip where it actually cuts completely through around the corners of here you will basically permanently distort the stencil you need to when you cut it don't fully cut through with the uh, tip of the cutters right up a lot further and then again come across and cut it there that way it stops the very high sort of metallic distortion that happens at the corners when you nip all the way through so give that a shot It'll probably make your life a lot easier and for those wondering, no, I am not dissing Lewis Rossman, really. Um, we get along perfectly fine. This is just a good old bit of uh, back and forth between us. So don't worry. I'll catch you all later. Till next time.